Welcome to Daily Armor. We'll find our scripture today in the book of Psalms, chapter number 8, looking at verse number 1, chapter number 8, verse number 1 of the book of Psalms, and it says, <clears throat> O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth! Exclamation point. Don't forget that. Exclamation point. Who has set thy glory above the heavens? Now, I first um, was kind of looking at this one particular verse, and then um, you can't help but to read the whole chapter. There's only nine verses. It's not a very lengthy uh, chapter, but it does sure does say a whole lot. Um, my thoughts have still been on prayer, um, and I was still thinking about how wonderful God is. And I uh, ran across this this scripture yesterday and um, decided that today would be a great day to share it. So just a, um, the whole chapter is really speaking about how that we have so much to be thankful for, so much to be grateful for, that God would choose um, to look upon us, that he would choose to do anything with us. Um, it's just having that uh, gratitude and that appreciation for spend, for even the, the uh, the responsibility and the great privilege that it is to spend time with him in prayer. So don't ever think that your prayers are um, a very small portion of your Christian walk, but your prayers are a very large portion of your Christian walk. Um, as we um, had yesterday, the secret of the Lord, that secret is that we have that ability we have that responsibility. We have that privilege to, to talk to him, to spend time with him, to go to him. Um, that is all about him <clears throat> and having that appreciation for that. So this first verse, and if you look at the last verse in verse number nine, it pretty much repeats the first thing. And then all of that in between is just, is just meditating over why that, God is so great. Why he is so, why excellent is his name in all the earth. Uh, because everything um, is all about him. And he created everything and he made everything and he made us and he chooses to use us. Um, I love verse number four. Let's read verse number four. And we'll probably go through all the verses, but go to verse number four real quick. What is man? that thou art mindful of him and the son of man, that thou visitest him. What is man that thou art mindful of him? If you just think about that, that's mankind. Um, that's for us ladies too. That's for, um, for every person, every boy, girl, man, woman, that he is mindful of, of me and he is mindful of you. Um, he thinks about us. It's not that he needs us as much as he wants us and there's a difference when the, somebody needs you for something um that's you know that's one thing but when they just want you um when you don't have anything much to bring to a relationship um when you don't have anything much to offer someone but yet that they are um, drawn to you whenever they are, they want to be in your presence. They want to, um, they want to spend time with you. They want to do things with you and not because you do anything special because maybe you don't have a lot to offer, a lot to give, but they just like spending time with you. That is so much more special than just those that need us. And uh, we have to be careful because sometimes we can crave attention so much that we are drawn to those that need us just for the sake of the attention. Um, instead of just accepting that God himself loves us, wants us, he wants us, he uses us, but it's not because he needs us to, to, to get his stuff done, to, to do those things. It's just because he wants us and he knows that it's healthy for us to have responsibility. It's healthy for us to um, uh, have purpose. He gives us purpose um, and he loves us and he wants us. He wants me and he wants you. So I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what's going on in your life, but spending time with the Lord and just appreciating him 
um, calling out to him and, and, and you're not reminding him that he's wonderful. You are, you are acknowledging that he's wonderful. He is so wonderful. Excellent is his name in all the earth. <coughs> Excuse me. My voice is still about gone. Um, so our Lord, oh Lord, our Lord. I love that. Oh Lord, I can say, oh Lord, my Lord. He is my Lord and excellent is his name. Um, excellent is that I, when I looked that up in the Bible dictionary, it meant famous, um, mighty, noble, worthy. Worthy, worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy, worthy is God in all the earth. Why? Because of these verses 2 through 7 or 2 through 8. 2 says, Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, and thou mightiest, uh, thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger. So he uses us to defeat the enemy he uses he used mankind to defeat the enemy he used jesus becoming man to defeat the enemy i love that because i can see i can see us all throughout there and then i'm reminded through several of these scriptures that he chose the redeemer to be mankind for us but not just for us but as a way to really really get at the true enemy that he would use mankind, which you'll see here in, um, which is verse number five, that we are made a little lower than the angels, but yet he uses mankind to defeat the enemy. And that's even more of a jab, more of a stab. And that's why that we are targeted. <coughs> verse number three, when I consider thy heavens, the works of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, when I consider the heavens, that consider, that is when you are pondering, meditating, think about, you just, when you're thinking about how big your problems are, think about what already God has already done. He made everything. He made the sun, the stars. He made the mountains, the ocean, the streams, the land. He made the us and the animals and the the fowls of the air and the and the fish of the sea. He made all of that. And when we think about, when we ponder, when we consider thy heavens, the works of thy fingers, thy heavens is those, that's that heavenly sky that we can see. And when you just simply look up, simply look up and you look at the clouds and how beautiful they are. And then they get dark and they bring us rain. And you can make, I mean, I have laid in the grass so many times when my kids were little and we've made shapes out of the, out of the clouds. And it's just a wonderful, precious time. And at the same time, at night, when you're looking up at the stars and you can see the big dipper and the little dipper, and you can make all these, all these things out with the stars and they're beautiful and they're gorgeous and God made them all. He made them all. Just think about that. Think about what he has done because then nothing, nothing is impossible for him and you will get it. You will get it. You'll see that there's nothing to hang on a little bit longer and just wait a little bit longer because there's nothing impossible. There's nothing that he can't do and we simply have to wait and watch, be looking for it, anticipate it anticipate it so consider thy heavens ponder on those things meditate on what he's already done verse number four again what is man that thou art mindful of him and the son of man that thou visiteth him i think about the son of man i think about jesus jesus came he left heaven to come be a man to come be a person to come dwell with mankind why would he do that because that's how much he loves us and it's some it just it's shocking and amazing and we can meditate on that and that helps us in those dark days that sometimes maybe that we're having and the questions that we have that maybe never will get answered here and that's okay if they don't get answered here and we'll have um uh no problems in heaven we'll have to worry about those things no more but while we're here we can think about how excellent is his name and what all he has done and that he left heaven 
to become a man. He knows the hardships that we go through because he's been in our shoes. There are so many times <coughs> where we can um, we can comfort someone um, if we've been in their shoes so much more than somebody that you're trying to comfort when you've never really walked in their shoes. When you've never, if you've never lost a child, it's hard for somebody who hasn't lost a child to comfort you. But you put those two moms together that share that bond that they both lost a child and they know how to comfort one another. They know that mom that's maybe has lost that child 20 years ago, 30 years ago, however long it's been. And that fresh, um, that fresh death that, that, that other, that new mom is going through. She knows how to comfort her in a big and mighty way. Jesus came, lived on this earth. He knows how to comfort us because he's walked in our shoes. He's done, he's lived without, he's done without, he's been shunned, he's been beaten, he's all these things that can happen in our life, all these things that, that have gone on through, uh, through life, he has experienced those things for me and for you so that he can comfort us and he can help us. And that not because he couldn't, but because then we are able to relate to him. We are able to relate to him. So that is uh, verse number four, that, that he would visit us, that he would visit us. That is just, we need to ponder on that. Number five, for thou hast made him a little lower than the angels and has crowned him with glory and honor. Mankind is a little lower than the angels. But I also think about Jesus, that he, he left heaven 100% God, 100% man, walked as a man and God crowned him with glory and honor in the face of the enemy. What a victory was wrought on Calvary. What a victory was wrought, was wrought whenever that they found that tomb empty because on that third day he rose again. What a victory was wrought. <clears throat> Number six, thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet. Mankind has been given a job and responsibility for those things that God has made. What has God made? He made the earth. He made the oceans. He made the, the animals, the fish, the birds. He made it all. And we have dominion over them. And that comes with a great responsibility. Um, it doesn't, it's not for us to get some kind of big head and we can treat things however we want to. It comes with a big responsibility. And it's for um, us to maintain a healthy, um, a healthy knowledge of God that we see all these things that He's done, and we see them on a daily basis to remind us, not the what how big and bad we are because we are boss over these things, but how wonderful He is because He gave us the responsibility of those things. Um, what a what a privilege and what a great responsibility and how precious he is for doing that for me and for you. <clears throat> Talks about verse number seven and eight, um, all sheep and oxen, yea, and the beast of the field, the fowl of the air and the fish of the sea and whatsoever passes through the paths of the seas. Um, everything, God made it all. God made it all. And we need to ponder and think about that. He made it all. And verse number nine, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Every time I hear these, these two verses, one and nine, there's a song that um, at our home church back in Lenore um, that our choir director and his wife would sing from time to time. And it's, it's, it's absolutely coming from this Psalms number eight. And I every time I see this psalm, every time I read that verse, I can hear Brother Burns and Mrs. Burns singing this song. I can hear it in my head right now. Oh, Lord, my Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. And it was just a precious, precious song, just purely praising him. That's what, don't miss that part. Don't miss that part. This psalm is not about us. It's about him. It's about how excellent he is. He is so excellent. 
He is so worthy of our praise and our honor. And don't miss that when you're praying. Don't miss that opportunity to praise him and to thank him and to be grateful for what all he has done and pay attention to what all he has done. Look and ponder and consider everything he has done because that will help you when you want to pray for that hard thing and you're afraid to pray for it because what if he didn't bring it to pass? That's his choice, but he has the absolute, has the ability to do it. So pray it and pray it in Jesus' name and pray it anticipating and looking and expecting and knowing that he has always got the right answer and he has always got it at the right time. And how excellent is his name in all the earth. His name is all over the earth. He is famous everywhere for what all he's done. We, we see it every time you look at the ocean and it just goes and goes every time you're in the mountains and you just look and then you go out here and you're enjoying the shade of a beautiful tree. You're enjoying the flowers and the fruit and the, the, the vegetables that come from the ground. God has put all that out there. He has created all of that. And um, we just say, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Thank you for joining me and I look forward to seeing you again soon.